Good morning and welcome to House of Hope, where life with God is better in every way and every day. Good morning, good morning once again. Welcome to the House of Hope Atlanta Sunday morning worship experience. We are happy you are here with us on this third Sunday of July. It is indeed Communion Sunday, and we are all grateful for the blood that Jesus shed for us way back on Calvary. And that blood that he shed way back on Calvary still has the same power today. Uh, if you would, please go with me now with a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your blood that you shed for us way back on Calvary. Lord, we thank you for the power that is still in that blood, the power that saves, the power that heals, the power that resurrects. Lord, we thank you for your power and your blood. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for every person who was represented here today. Lord, we thank you for each and every family that is watching. Lord, we ask you to touch them one by one, then touch us all collectively, Lord. We ask you for a special prayer for the man of God who will come to bring the word today, Lord. Bless his family, Lord, from the, from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord. We ask you to give them power to preach the word from on high that some soul may be changed and some soul may come to you today, Lord. These are many of the blessings we ask in your son's name. Let us all say amen. Today's scripture comes from the second Corinthians first chapter, verses 8 through 10, and I shall be reading from the New Living Translation, and it reads thusly, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought that we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stop relying on ourselves and learn to rely only on God who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us. The word of God for the people of God and all of God's people said, Amen. How many of you know we serve a God, the same God from yesterday, is the same God today, and the same God tomorrow? How many know if he blessed you yesterday, he can bless you again today? If he did it before, he can show no, do it again. Not only can he do it again, but he's going to do it again. Somebody shout, he's doing it again. Hallelujah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're doing it again. Yeah. You made the blind man see. You made the lame man walk again. You called the dead to rise. And that's why we dance in liberty. Cause you're doing it all again.
it again. You may not understand why we're so excited this morning. I'll tell you why we're excited. We're excited because the song that they just sang makes a theological claim that since God has already done it, what you're going through right now isn't too hard for God because God has already done it. Are y'all going to help me on the stream today? Healing is not too hard for him. Deliverance is not too hard for him. My depression is not too hard for him. He's done it before. Therefore, God can do it again. Come on, I need you to put it in the chat. Do it, do it. Lord, do it, do it, do it. Do it. I don't care what your it is. Put it in the chat. Lord, do it. Lord, change it. Lord, move by your power. We need you to do it. it is and instead of crying about it instead of getting frustrated about it I dare you to put in the chat Lord do it again Lord do it again Lord do it again yeah. I don't know about you but I believe he can do it again I believe he can, I believe he can do it again I, I don't know who we're encouraging right now but I need you to put in the chat Lord do it, do it, do it, do it, do it again. And in that same spirit, hallelujah, in that same spirit on behalf of our senior pastor, oh, don't mess with me because I see him doing something again for somebody on the stream. I don't, I don't know what you're going through, but I dare you to trust that God, the same God that delivered you the last time, the same God that made sure that you had your rent the last time, the same God that same kept you in God. your right mind yeah. the last time. I dare you to believe that God can do it again. I dare you to give him glory right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wait a minute, I hear, I hear joy on the string. I hear joy in your house. Come on, somebody give him glory. of hope this morning listen our worship has been made more special just because you're joining us on the stream so you know what we need you to do we need you to tell us if you're visiting and where you are visiting us from come on come on we want to shout out your city tell us where you're watching from so that we can welcome you more warmly on the stream in addition family we miss your faces so will you take a selfie really quick and so that you can tag us in it we want you to put hashtag hope Graham so that we can add it to our Instagram story or our Facebook Facebook story as well. Again, on behalf of Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr., Lady Andrea Smith, and the entire House of Oak family, we welcome you into the presence of a God who's able to do it again. Come on, put it in the comments and say, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it again. In that spirit, we want to welcome our senior pastor, Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. He's one of the best preachers and pastors this side of heaven, and we love him. Come on and give God praise for our senior pastor. Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice, and we're here to be glad in it. I don't know about you, but God is so good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And whatever God wants to do in my life, I agree with it. What about you? My God, God is amazing. God is awesome, and God is mighty. And we all give Him the glory, give God the honor, and we ought to give God the praise. For you alone, Lord, are worthy of all the praise to God be the glory. Listen, God is moving already in our worship experience, and God is also moving in our ministry initiatives. And I'm thankful for what God is doing, thankful for our, 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 our media ministry, grateful for our worship and our arts ministry. God is doing some amazing things. And let's go and see what's happening in the ministry area of our church with our hope happenings. Uh, let's go to our media team for our hope happenings. I'll be back in a second. 
What's going on, Virtual Crew? Your girl, Crystal, is here again to help you stay well-informed on everything going on here at the House of Hope. So let's get into it. So you just you think it's just okay to just start rattling off an introduction without me? Like, my, your girl, Crystal, is here, but you didn't even recognize that I'm standing. Obviously, the people see you up here, too. So, But I'll let you know when it's your turn to properly introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Family, students will be returning to school soon, and we want to help teachers prepare for their return. Let's unite as a church body in our One Response initiative by participating in acts of support for teachers. We are supporting partner schools in DeKalb County with their teacher supply closets. So please bring designated supplies found on our social media sites and the church's website. Supplies can be dropped off daily at the church administration offices or in person at the Narthex. Now through July 30th, your participation will help provide teachers with the needed classroom supplies required for their economically disadvantaged students. So, so now it's my turn, right? So calling all men. Yeah. Our House of Hope Men's Life University meets every Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Join today by texting LIFU to the number on the screen. Here I go. Here I go. And are I you struggling with a hurt, a habit, or hang-up that stems from depression, addiction, anxiety, or abuse? If so, please join Celebrate Recovery to find healing and renewal through Jesus Christ. Meetings are held every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Please email us at the address on the screen to sign up today. And I just want to say... Not just yet. We need you, family, to help replenish our food pantry with non-perishable food, such as canned goods, breakfast foods, canned fruits, and vegetables. Now, you may drop off your donations every Thursday in the atrium from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we know hard times happen to everyone. So if you are sick, experiencing bereavement, a life transition, or a crisis, our congregational care team is here to assist you. Just text the word CARE to the number on the screen, and a member of our team will reach out to you. If you're between the ages of 21 through 39, make sure you're joining young adult small groups every Thursday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Just follow the Union ATL for more information. And if you're in grades K through 5th or 6th through 12th, join Hope Kids and Youth for Sunday and Wednesday Zoom calls. Go to Hope Youth now on all social media platforms for more information. Now, I know I can handle this one. Hold on. If you need prayer, you can text the word prayer. If you desire to be saved, just text the word salvation. And if you'd like to become a member of the House of Hope Atlanta, text connect to the number on your screen. Now, Corey, you've been kind of quiet today. Why don't you say something to the people? I'm texting prayer because I need prayer for you. <laughs> but since you're going to allow me to say something, life with God is better in every way, every day. Be blessed. Good job. You did that so good. But you ain't let me speak the whole time. You ain't Crystal. need to. You spoke a whole lot when I wasn't here. That's the that's the point. She wasn't here. Y'all remember like uh, that long string uh, string of time, all those Sundays that she was gone, was and I was here, and she wasn't here. But you gonna come back and then just try to take away the whole hope, hope happening? No, you right At here the with end, me. this we your girl this. Crystal. We this your girl this Crystal. If they only saw these Nebuchadnezzars that you have on your feet, <laughs> you wouldn't be that girl. All right, thank you, media team. Again, I want to appreciate you guys so much for all that you're doing. Uh, you're doing an amazing job in ministry. Let me congratulate you again on winning 19 Telly Awards uh, this year for ministry productions from last year. Two of them are gold awards. I mean, that's the highest ranking award in the Telly Awards. Uh, just amazing. Uh, this year, over 11,000 submissions uh, took place across the nation. And out of 11th, one of the top submitted award, uh, media award uh, organizations in the world. And we uh, were blessed to receive 19 of them. And if you see the categories and the people that we were up against, you will let you know just the level of production that's happening in this place. And for that, I give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And so I'm thankful for all the great events that are happening. And uh, I want to thank those of you who've not just supported our, our team, our worship on Sundays and uh, Hope TV. Oh my goodness, the new website for Hope TV, the new website for the church. 
And so y'all continue to watch everything on the website and keep abreast of everything that's happening through Hope Happenings. And we'll be back in person worship uh, the first Sunday in August. But today, uh, those who are going to join us for in-person worship, 9 a.m. at the Atlanta location, 10 a.m. at the Macon location, and 11.30 at the West Point location for those. Uh, and so I'm just thankful that God is blessing us right now. And so keep us in prayer. Uh, my prayer is that this month we're going to finish, finally finish the AC project of the cathedral. It's taken us 13 years to get here, y'all. We're almost there, and I'm praying that it's going to be finished in the next several weeks. Keep us in prayer that everything gets in on time so we can put that phase. It was the second largest project on the whole campus. Uh, the only thing that's larger than that was the, is going to be the parking lot. So we're almost finished with the second biggest phase in Mission 2020, over $2 million phase in terms of the AC overhaul of the cathedral. We're almost there, y'all. It's been choking us, but we've been doing it by the grace of God. So please keep us in your prayer. Uh, and uh, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just be prayerful for all the ministries of the church that we continue to feed those who are homeless and visit the prisons and clothe those who are naked and uh, take as we take care of our uh, tap of this house. We're grateful that our team has now gone back to Rwanda uh, to finish the building pro project over there and also to take supplies. So I'm grateful that that House Folk Rwanda Church, and you see those pictures there now that we are making tremendous strides uh, internationally now uh, over in East Africa. And I pray that once the pandemic subsides that some of you are going to be able to go over there with us to Rwanda, to our church and school there, and worship with our students. Over 700 students are in our school there in Rwanda. And I'm just grateful to God for you that God has allowed us to do ministry for our great God. And uh, and not just that, but our, as I said earlier, our Mission 2020, God First, we're about finished with the AC overhaul. We're waiting 150 more tons of AC to put in that building. And once that happens, we're going to go after everybody who used to rent this place, from Spelman College to all the graduations. Y'all, come on back home. We got AC now. We can, we can host you now. And uh, I'm thankful to God for that. So keep praying for us. All the roofs have been done on the Edgewood Center, the atrium uh, overhaul in the Edgewood and the Smith Center overhaul in the theater, all the bathrooms, the atrium. Uh, we added three, the last three AC units that were out. We put them on the atrium now. So all new AC units at the atrium. I'm telling you, y'all, God is good and God is blessing us right now. And we're one step away from finishing the renovation, the overhaul the, of the cathedral uh, ACs and then the, onto the parking lot in the cathedral interior we come. So God is blessing us, but it's only made possible because of your support. And so on this third Sunday today, this third Sunday in July, July 17th, I need you to get prepared to give now. Uh, I need you to prepare to give. And I'm telling you, I want you to expect that God's gonna do something great even this month. So prepare to give. So we're gonna pause now for a word of prayer. Our strong God, I thank you that you're gonna make all grace abound toward us, that we have all sufficiency in all things. Lord, would you receive these our gifts, sanctify every gift and every giver. Let no one lack, let no one have a need. Oh, we sow these seeds now into your kingdom because we expect to reap a bountiful harvest. We do this in love, we do this in faith. We do this because we believe in kingdom building. Now, Lord, multiply our seeds and open the doors of opportunity for those who don't have employment so they can provide for their families and then make a contribution for kingdom building. Would you rebuke the devourer for our sakes? Hallelujah. Would you make all grace abound toward us that we have all sufficiency in all things that we could abound under every good work? We decree it, declare we would believe it and receive it and count it done now in joy. In Jesus' Jesus name amen listen there are four ways you can give first you can give through text to give text to give you can text the code h-o-h-a-t that's house of hope atlanta tithe text that to 678-201-1351 listen a dime out of every dollar belongs to god is required you ought to give that to god in obedience in faith and in love so h-o-h-a-t that's for tithe H-O-H-A-O, -H that's for offering. Come on, you give your offering now. H-O-H-A-O -H -A -O for offering. Come on and give that now. Text it to 678-201-1351. If you want to give to what God first or Mission 2020 to help us finish this AC phase, uh, that's H-O-H-A-G-F. That's God first, Mission 2020. We're going to finish this thing. We all, listen, we, we, once we finish that, it's downhill. To God be the glory. So everybody give something today. I know you're traveling and vacationing, but go ahead. Don't forget the Lord's, uh, your resources for the Lord's house. Uh, you want to give through Cash App. It's dollar sign H-O-H-A-T-L. 
information is on the screen. If you want to give through the website, our new improved website, I want to thank our media team for doing an amazing job. If you're watching through the website, just click that giving links, that giving link. And when you get a chance, peruse the website, the Hope TV new website and the, and the House of Hope Atlanta new website. Just check it out. Shout out to the media team. Y'all did a wonderful job on it. So if you're on the website, click the giving links and follow the prompts accordingly. If you want to give uh, to the P.O. Box, our P.O. Box is, is P.O. Box 361499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Again, P.O. Box 361499, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. And lastly, if you just happen to be in by Senate of the church and want to drop it by uh, during normal church office hours, Monday through Friday, uh, just call 442-439-336 and you can drop your offerings and your tithes off by the Atlanta location. So text to give, cash app through the website, P.O. Box, or just drop it by the church. We'd love to have you to do that. Uh, we're going to continue in worship now. Our worship arts team who has blessed us in an incredible ways for the past two years. They're going to come back and bless us and I'll be back with the word of God to continue our series this month. So let's, let's go ahead now and worship the Lord together. Come on, let's worship now. As we get ready to celebrate this communion service, we recognize that Jesus said in his word, no man take my life, I lay it down freely. We're so grateful that he decided to die for you and for me. He agreed to do it. Hallelujah. And we worship the Lord today. And we sing this song. I heard an old, old story about a savior that came from glory how he gave his life at Calvary he did it all just for me they nailed him in his hands they nailed him in his feet they nailed him to the cross to die But all the while he was thinking of me Cause in those nails was every mistake I made The thorns were formed from my lies The lashes you took, they were meant for me but you told God you would take them instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to give your life to save my Oh, what a sacrifice you made for me. Knowing all that you would have to go through. You agree. Hey. Thank you for your sacrifice. Let's sing together. Say, I heard and know about a Savior that came from glory. How he gave his life at Calvary. He did, he did it all just for me. Hallelujah. They nailed him in his hands. They nailed him in his feet. They nailed him to the cross to die. And all the while, he was thinking of me. Cause in those nails was every mistake I made. The thorns were formed from my eyes. Hallelujah. The lashes you took, they were made for me. But you told God, but you told God you would take them instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. Your life to save my oh what a sacrifice you made for me knowing all that you would have come on say you agreed to do 
decision to do it for me. You knew what I would do. You knew that I would lie. You knew that I would fornicate. You knew that I would mess up. took the fall and thought of me (laughs) above all like a rose trampled on the ground
Come on and clap your hands, oh ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I said clap your hands, oh ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. My, 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 he's worthy to be praised. Yes. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Didn't have to do it. He agreed to do it. He agreed to die. He agreed to sacrifice his own life to save man. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. I don't know why. Jesus loved me. I don't know why. Don't know why he cared. I don't know why. He sacrificed his life. <laughs> I'm glad he did it. Somebody say, I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did. his mighty home in glory yeah. to bring to us redemption story then it died just for you and me I said I'm glad He agreed to do it, y'all. Every time they sing that he agreed to do it. He agreed to do it. And that just makes me glad, y'all. Y'all forgive me, but I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. If you're happy and you know it, you ought to show some sign. If you're happy, you know it. When the spirit falls on you, it'll make you shout hallelujah. I'm gonna move on in a minute. He agreed to do it. He agreed to die. And if you're glad he agreed to do it, and because of that, you're redeemed, and let the redeemer of the Lord say so. I want you to give him a I, and guess what? Since he agreed to do it, I agree to give him praise. I agree to give him glory. I agree to shout hallelujah. I'm gonna give y'all a minute. I want you to give him an I agree praise. One, two, one, two, three, five.
my goodness, he was crucified, laid behind the stones, lived to die, rejected and alone. Uh, my God, like a rose trampled on the ground. He took the fall and thought of you and me above all. And I give God praise that uh, for how he, he died, rejected and alone and, uh, because he thought of you. That's the kind of love we have from our God. And I give God praise for that. Every time I think about that, uh, the love of God and uh, just moves me um, to heights unimagined. And I, know you, I want you to know that you are loved by God even on this day. I want to get into the word now, and uh, my, I'm just trying to calm down from that um, powerful experience. And um, I want to get into the word. We're going to continue our series today on coronavirus love. And I hope you've been blessed by the series thus far. And today we're going to be looking at the book of Genesis, chapter 7 and 8. And uh, we've been talking about how coronavirus has affected our relationships and affected us relationally and emotionally in a variety of ways. And today, uh, from the book of Genesis, chapter 7, I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible. And uh, I'm going to take a look at Genesis 7, verse number 1, Message Bible. Eugene Peterson says, Next God said to Noah, Now board the ship, you and all your family, out of everyone in this generation. You're the righteous one. Mm. Take on board with you seven pairs of every clean animal, male and female. One pair of every unclean animal, male and female. Seven pairs of every kind of bird, a male and female, to ensure their survival on earth. Lord have mercy. In just seven days, I'll pour on earth. Pour rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. I'll make a clean sweep of everything that I've made. He says to, to, to him in verse 1, Now board the ship, you and all your family, out of everyone in this generation, you're the righteous one. I want to talk for a few moments from this thought, a complicated love. A complicated love. Brothers and sisters, we uh, have been discussing the reality of how coronavirus has affected relationships uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, it's brought the best out of relationships, and this coronavirus has even uh, brought the worst out of some relationships. One of the things about coronavirus, particularly when we're in a pandemic, and many have been hemmed in, a lot of questions, a lot of debates about vaccinations, debates uh, about travel disputes, debates, debates um, about the political side of the agenda. So many questions, so many people have had a lot to say about the coronavirus pandemic and how it has affected us from a relational perspective. A lot of things are complicated. Things, uh, how we deal with kids, how we had to face death, uh, how kids were being educated during the pandemic. Uh, people deal with no resources, many not working, uh, the inability to travel. And so people don't, many people have underestimated the impact that coronavirus has had on us relationally and emotionally. And a lot of things have been complicated because of the pandemic. As a matter of fact, Jeremy Brown in an article that was published said that many relationships have crumbled uh, during the pandemic because people could not adjust and adapt to a lot of what was happening uh, to their families and to their relationships in the pandemic. Uh, this has been a complicated time. Uh, people have uh, sought therapy and counseling and many people have decided to just press the heart reset button and start over because coronavirus has had that type of effect on marriages, on platonic relationships, on siblings, even in the working environment. And one, when I was pondering this particular topic and this idea of how the pandemic has affected us relationally, uh, coronavirus love, one of the things I thought about was uh, something that made me think of the pandemic, something that made me think about quarantine. When you look at the book of Genesis, I see a case of what I want to call a complicated love. I think it's complicated because at the time of this text, God, if would, is getting ready to quarantine a family. Uh, death is getting ready to be imminent in the world. Uh, Genesis 6, 6, God said, it repented me that I ever I made humankind, that God felt grieved and mistaken and wanted to start and repopulate the earth. That was one family that found grace and favor in the sight of God, and that was the family of Noah. And what is interesting here is that God 
says to Noah, Noah, I need you and your family, all of your family, your wife and your three sons and their wives. I need you guys to go and quarantine. I need you guys to go and I need you to spend some time alone. Death is going to be is going to break out in the world because you are righteous. You're going to be spared. But craziness is going to abound all around you. It is amazing here because it's so complicated that Noah and his family inevitably end up being quarantined, if you let me use that word. They end up being in, the, in, in a space where they can't really integrate and interact with those outside of the world. They're in a place where they have to face and they have to look at each other without being able to uh, have their, their, their mobility. Their mobility has been restricted. Uh, their travel has been limited. And a lot has, has come to the horizon as a result of what's happening at the time of this text, Genesis chapter 7. And when I look at that, there are some parallels between what is happening in the day of Noah and what is happening in our lives. And it was complicated, not just for us, but I believe it also was complicated for Noah. And there are three things that really constitute this complicated love for Noah and his family. The first thing that is, I find interesting is this. They were in a position, here it is, number one, where they can't avoid issues. I said they can't avoid issues. Look what God says to them in Genesis 7, 1. God says, now, Noah, listen, I need you and your family, all of your family, I need you to board the ship. Uh, you uh, out of everyone in this generation, they've been contaminated with the, with the fallen angels and the Nephilim in Genesis chapter 6. But you have found favor in my sight. Uh, you walked in righteousness. You listened to my voice. And because of that, I'm going to spare you. But here's what I need you to do. I need you and your family. You're going to inevitably, Noah, be on this ark for over one year. Uh, Noah, you're going to be on this ark. Uh, you're going to be quarantined. You, you're, you, you're going to be together. You will not be able to have private space uh, from uh, your wife. Noah, you're old. You're going to be 600 years, of, 600 years of age. You're going to be old in your ways. You're going to be old and crabby. She's going to be old and crabby. You can have children uh, that's going to be with you for over a year, and none of you will have space. You won't have a man cave. Uh, Noah, you won't be able to go and, 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 and play golf. Mrs. Noah won't be able to go and get a, get a massage done or have a mani-pedi date. Noah, it's going to be a situation where you and your family will have to deal with each other. You won't be able to avoid the issues and the idiosyncrasies and the attitudes. Everybody's going to be in the same space at the same time, and you're going to have to learn how to uh, deal with each other. Brothers and sisters, Noah is in a place where they'll board an ark, there are only so much space on the ark, only so many rooms on the ark. There is no privacy in the ark. And whatever they've been carrying, whatever they've been ignoring, in the past there was a time they could get away and, and breathe and just get a sigh of relief and get a break from each other. But over uh, this extended period of time, no, there will be no breaks. Uh, whatever issues you have, whatever, whatever challenges you've had, that won't be any reprisal. That won't be any reprieve, rather. You're going to have to deal with your issues. And the truth for all, a lot of us is the pandemic has made us really come to grips on what and who is real in our lives. And I believe that while it may be difficult for many of us, and we're coming out of this thing prayerfully, that it's made you sit silently in a place and address things that otherwise you perhaps would have swept under the rug. Many of us have had to ask ourselves the question, uh, am I really ready for the next chapter in my life? Many of us have had to be on our own arcs and look at ourselves without the ability to turn our faces. The, the pandemic has turned the mirror on a lot of us and made us ask ourselves the question, what am I going to do about my issues? Every now and then in our lives, God will place us in a situation where your issues, where your concerns, where your obstacles, where your challenges are unavoidable. You can't run from them. It was the late, great James Baldwin who said that while it is true that everything that is faced won't be fixed, it is also true that nothing can be fixed until it is faced. Some of you are wondering about when you're going to find a sense of normalcy or when your new normal is going to begin. Uh, could it be that, the, that this quarantine period, that this pandemic period is somehow extended 
because God has allowed this moment for you to deal with issues that you've been trying to avoid. The things that have taken your peace, the things that you have just brushed off to go along, to get along. Maybe God has given us an opportunity to face and address each other, to ask ourselves the question, can I deal with them for the rest of my life? Do I like them enough to be with them in the ark for over a year? Or is God saying to you there's another level, a higher level of trajectory, another weight of glory, some bigger and better blessings coming your way, but you can't get to this until you deal, you can't get to that until you deal with this. Because here's the truth, you and I can't be what we're going to be and what we were at the same time. Uh, one of the things that we have to do in order to have elevation, elevation may require separation, but until we can deal with reality of our issues. And so maybe some of you are watching and it's been complicated trying to figure out, is this what I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life? And maybe this season, God has put you in a place for you to deal with the issues so you can avoid them, so you can address them. There is no escapism now. you got to deal with it. And I came to encourage you uh, that even when you're dealing with it, it may be painful. When you're dealing with it, it may be hurtful. When you're dealing with it, what you see may be ugly. But sometimes it takes the ugliness. It takes you looking at that which is which does not feel good. Sometimes when you look yourself in the mirror and say, it's me, O oh Lord, and search me, God, sometimes surgery is painful. But I promise you that if you deal with it and you address the issues, the other side of your healing, you're going to thank God that God allowed you to deal with this moment. You're going to thank God on the back end that I had to do some inner work to look at what was happening in my life, to address the things. God will make you sometimes have to deal with stillness where you can't run. Some of you who are watching me, we love practicing avoidance. Some of us who are watching right now, many of us, we love to run when things get tough. Many of us have our own protective mechanisms that when relationships get difficult, you run from this one to that one as a way of escapism because you don't want to deal with yourself. But every now and then, God will put you in a complicated situation like he does Noah where you can't run. You can't escape. You can run, but you can't hide. Some of you who are watching me right now, uh, I don't care if you're in Atlanta. Sometimes I know you want to do it. You want to get in, in, in your Maserati. You want to get in your Corvette and ride out to Hartfield Jackson International Airport. Get there and transfer over into a twin engine Learjet. Shoot yourself up in a stratosphere beyond Jupiter, beyond Saturn, beyond clear these, beyond the Milky Way. You want to go beyond Uranus and go to the first, second, third heaven and get there trying to run from issues. But I came to tell you every now and then when you try to run from issues, God will put you in a place where you cannot run. Sometimes you cannot run from yourself. And that's what God does here with Noah. Noah and his family have to be in a place where they can't avoid the issues. They have to be together because it's complicated. It, it does not feel good. But, but what God is doing is God is trying to birth a new dispensation of them. And even though it's painful and difficult, it was necessary for their journey. And so sometimes uh, it, we, we, coronavirus has taught us about complicated love because it teaches us sometimes you can't avoid issues. But secondly, Coronavirus has been complicated for many of us because, because we have been confined with the clean and the unclean. What do you mean? It's right here in the text. I'm really embarrassed by this. Look what it says. God says to Noah next. Now board the ship. You and all your family. And out of everyone in the generation, you're the righteous one. And then listen to the instructions in verse number two. Take on board with you, Noah, seven pairs of every clean animal. Male, a male, and a female. One pair of every clean, of every unclean animal, a male and a female. Seven pairs of every kind of bird, a male and a female. God says, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to take with you, listen to the language, seven pairs of clean animals, male and female, and one pair of every unclean animal, a male and a female. He says, so what you're going to do, Noah, I'm going to send rain to clean the earth, to wipe the earth, and you're gonna inevitably be on that ark for over a year. You're gonna be on that ark for over a year. Uh, you're gonna be in the ark for over a year, but not just with your wife, your sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives, but I need you to take on the ark with you seven pair of clean animals, male and female, 
and one pair of unclean animals, male and female. So no, on this ark with you, with your family, you're going to have some stuff that's clean <laughs> and some stuff that's unclean. You're going to have some stuff that's good and you're going to have some stuff that's not so good. And here's the reality. Aboard your ship, aboard your ark, you're going to have to coexist and cohabitate with that which is clean and that which is dirty. That which is good and that which is not so good. He says what you're going to have to deal with, you're going to be confined that every day you're going to see that which you like and that which you don't like. Every day you're going to see that which is on top and that which is not on top. Every day you're going to have to deal with things that smell good and the things that don't smell good. And know his reality. You won't be able to leave it. You're going to have to be in it and realize that sometimes the good and the bad will be a part of your sojourn and a part of your existence. As much as you and I want to only dwell in that which is clean, and one don't want to deal with the stuff that's unclean, God says that is not a picture of what life looks like. Sometimes, every now and then, things get complicated. Uh, I'm watching, I want to talk to the women who've been, who've been facing pandemic and, and, it's, and, and it's affected you in your own home because you're clean and your husband is unclean. You clean the house and the kids dirty the house. And my God, you've been dealing with that which is both clean and clean, unclean. My God, you, you've been had to deal with attitudes that are wonderful and attitudes that are horrible. And yet you have to deal with this at the same time without the ability to avoid or escape. You got to be confined with that which is good and bad. And let me share this with you because I think it's very, very important that sometimes what coronavirus has, do has done and it's given us a more authentic picture of what relationships look like. Whether you're married, I want to talk to those who are thinking about getting married. Sometimes the challenge of getting married or, 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 or becoming a newlywed, sometimes the challenge is you only can see the stuff which is clean. You only can see the stuff that's good. And sometimes it takes you living a while or learning more about a person. And the more you learn about a person, you, the more you will know that person is not perfect. As a matter of fact, here's when you know that you love a person. You'll know that you really love a person when meeting that person's needs becomes your need. Here's when you really know that you love a person. You, you, because love is this. Love is an unconditional commitment to an imperfect person. Let me say it again. I think that's tweetable and Facebookable and YouTubeable. I said love is an unconditional commitment to an imperfect person. You will know your love is authentic when meeting that person's need becomes your need. And what happens here, I want to say this, many of us love to celebrate the clean and the good things and the moments when things smell good. Many of us love the nice perfumes that you can buy on Saks Fifth Avenue. But every now and then things will get smelly and stinking in your context. And what you can't and you can't run every time something stinks. As a matter of fact, many of us, we need to learn that you really don't know what you feel about a person until that relationship has gone through some stinky stuff and you've learned how to overcome it, you really can't trust it because anything that hasn't been tested can't be trusted. And Noah and his family have to learn how to deal with the clean and the unclean, the good and the bad at the same time. And I just want to encourage those of us who are watching that if you're looking for somebody who has sinless perfection relationally, the only person you can look at in that context is Jesus the Christ. Because all of us got some stuff about us that does not smell good. And what I love about this text is we, we have to get to a point of mature love. Uh, every parent who's watching me knows that when you have to clean a, a, a crying baby, when you have to uh, 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 clean up when that baby has regurgitated and threw up on you, that, that, that raising a baby, that having a newborn is not always glorious. That in the midnight hour, you're going to have to go through things that are both positive and negative. But the question is, how do you handle the clean and the unclean? How do you handle the clean and the dirty, the good and the bad? Will you run or can you stay there and realize that although I have, I have one pair of stuff that's unclean, 
you are thank God that God has given you seven things that are clean. And what happens a lot in our relationships is we look at when we're confined, we only see the one thing that's unclean. We don't celebrate the seven things that are clean. It's right there in the text. He says, I want you to bring seven pairs of every clean animal and one pair of the unclean animal. Saying, so bring seven clean, one unclean. Isn't it amazing how many of us will look at one thing that's not so good and use the one thing that's not so good to let that represent the totality of who another individual is can i tell you something don't just focus on the one thing that's bad or not so good about a person about a relationship give god praise for the seven things that are correct because guess what uh even if one thing is bad out of seven that's still a passing grade and i'm so i'm so sad that sometimes in our lives we allow one situation or or, or, or one deficiency or, or, or one personality trait that we don't like or one incident to cause us to miss out on blessings that god has for us and so noah has to learn how to be confined with the good and the bad simultaneously and understand that God is able to take the good and the bad in our lives and work it for his glory and for our good. And so maybe even in this coronavirus love, relationally, we've had to see the bad about some of our friends. We've had to see, the, see some of the things that we don't like about the individuals. You know, some of you are perhaps contemplating marriage, and I remember one of the marriage counselors said that one of the great ways that you know you're ready to be in a relationship with that person, they said, now write down the list of things that you love about that person. Write down the list of things that you like about that person. And once you've written your list of things that you love and like about the person, write a list of things that you would change about that person if you could. The things that get on your nerves, the things that make you upset, the things that you don't like about that person, the things that you would change about that person if you had the power to do so. Write a list of the things that you love, write a list of the things that you don't like, the things that you would change. And here's the question you got to ask yourself. When you look at the list of things that you like to change, that you don't like, you have to ask yourself this question. What if nothing on this side of the list changes? What if they remain who they are for the rest of the relationship? Are these things that I don't like deal breakers? Are these things that the unclean things that get on my nerves? Can I tolerate this for the rest of my life? And if you can't tolerate that list of the things that you don't like, for the rest of your life, then that may be a good indication that this is not something you should enter into. Because you don't enter into a relationship thinking you can change a person. You got to enter into that relationship to accept them as they are, realizing that we all will evolve, but everybody has some good stuff and some bad stuff about us. And unfortunately, the pandemic has brought out more of the things in many of us that we don't like. Anxiety has gone to another level. Bitterness and resentment, unhappiness. When you can't work, can't travel, not making enough, enough money that you used to make. It brings out sometimes the heightened parts of our personalities that are not so cool. But the blessing is, it's complicated, but it matures us and takes us to a higher level. So listen, it's complicated because you can't avoid issues. It's complicated because we're confined with cleaning and unclean. But it's also complicated because we're called to make sure something survives. I said we're called to make sure something survives. Here was my question. God, why you put Noah on this ark? Why do you quarantine him and his family in this first global pandemic? If you this biblical pandemic was death was everywhere. Why do you allow him, his wife, his son, Shem, Ham, Japheth, their wives to be on board an ark with stinking, smelly animals for over a year? with No way of escape. The good and the bad. They don't have a, a man cave. They don't have a girl's night out. They have to deal with their issues. They can't. They're confined with the clean and the unclean. And here's what he said. He said, because they've been called to make sure something survives. It's right here in the text. He says, listen, he said, take on board with you seven pairs of very clean animal, a male and a female, one pair of very clean animal. They take seven pairs of clean, one pair of unclean, male and female, seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female. Here it is, to ensure their survival on earth. My God. He says, I'm going to take you aboard because that's something that survival is dependent upon you. 
that I want to teach you how to ensure survival. My God, this whole experience uh, is going to teach you lessons on survival. This quarantine, no, this pen, this global watery antediluvian pen, post-diluvian and antediluvian pandemic are coming to teach you how to make some things survive. Did you hear what I just said? Know why you're stuck in this confined and smelly place where you can't avoid issues. You got to deal with the clean and the unclean. But while you're there, I am commanding you to learn lessons on survival. The animal world can't survive without your guidance, without your supervision and your stewardship. Know when you come out of this, you're going to know lessons on survival. Some of you are wondering why it's been so complicated, why it's been so difficult can I tell you why because even in the good and the bad God is teaching you lessons on survival my God you've had to face adversities like never before but on the back end of the pandemic you don't know what you could go through had you not gone through it now you know how to survive now you know how to live now you know how to take life to another level uh, you've never lived through this you didn't know you could go through this until you went through it but now you you're a survivor. And I wish I'm talking to somebody who can testify. Things have been tough. Things have been difficult. But I've learned lessons on how to survive. My, I'm stronger now. I'm wiser now. I'm better now. My faith has gone to another level because it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Uh, just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promises. All oh, for grace to trust him more. A lot of us have been suffering at the, since the beginning of the pandemic. It's affected what we believe, how we cope, how we work, how we relate to each other. It's put a test on us in every way imaginable. But here's a blessing. Here you are today, July 17th. Lord have mercy. Here you are today. Uh, yes, Lord. Two, almost two and a half years since the pandemic commenced. And yet somehow, some way, you're still here by the grace of God. I didn't say everything was perfect. I didn't say you have everything you needed. But what I can say, you're still here by the grace of God. You've learned how to survive. You've learned how to survive in the marriage. You've learned how to survive by end of the marriage. You've learned how to survive as a single parent. You've learned how to survive as a college student. You've learned how to survive. You have been able to endure because destiny is contingent upon how you handle this moment. And so, so many people have been struggling and suffering and suffering because it's been difficult for them. And, and so, and the question has been asked, uh, why, has, why has the pandemic been so hard on relationships, both romantic and platonic? And uh, here's, and there are a few things I read in the article, I'm going to lift these things for you. Uh, it's been difficult for us because uh, the pandemic, and I'm closing with this, it's been complicated because it's brought up unscheduled time for dredged up dormant issues. I talked later about this uh, this coming Wednesday. Un unscheduled time for dredged up dormant issues. Uh, you've, been, you've been moving so much, but there's some things that have been dormant, dormant connections. You've been moving so much that now it really shows you, is this really living? Is this life? You've been so busy, sometimes you'll be so busy that you really can't accept reality. But now you slow down enough to see whether this is substance or adding value to your life or not. Uh, here's another thing. A lack of independence led to relationship feeling stale. Uh, when, when, you, when, you, when you don't have the independence, when you don't have the independence uh, that you once had, once had, when you don't have the freedom that you once had, Sometimes it'll make you feel that what we have here is stale. There's no outlet. There's no discovery. There's no, there's no release. Uh, what has happened, uh, we don't have unique experiences to bring to the relationship table because you've been stuck in the same place, unable to see new things. And so that lack of an independence had made the relationship feel still. Here's another one. The inability to deal with stressed, fractured partnerships. The inability to deal with stressed, fractured partnerships. Sometimes fresh, fr stress fractures were already there pre-pandemic. But what the pandemic has done, put more stress and more pressure on that which was fractured. And that's why it's made you more unhappy. Because you cannot run from it. You can't run away from it. And as a consequence, the stress fractures are more prevalent now. And it's caused 
pain, a lot of unhappiness in a lot of people. Here's another one. Adapting to new roles and routines have proved to be difficult because what has happened now, you've had to adapt to a new role, a new person. What you were and who you were prior to the pandemic, you've had to adapt to a whole new way of doing things. And for many people, that new role is too difficult and it makes you unhappy. Here's another one. An inability to handle pressure from extended family and other friends has caused resentment. And so what happens here, having other people uh, who are part, other people who, who have something to say. Uh, the other people aboard the ship. Noah's got to deal with his wife, their issues. They're both old and crabby. Noah's 600. Got to deal with his sons, their issues, their wives. And now has to deal with the animals. So sometimes having to deal with the others uh, has now made what you go through so difficult. And so some of you are watching me right now. And, and it's changed your whole perspective. As a consequence, therapists and psychologists are saying that their offices and even virtual sessions are full now. Because most people are struggling more relationally than they are physically or even financially. I want to tell you that th it has been complicated. It has been a difficult time and a difficult moment for us. But what I want to encourage you today is this. Knowing that God's love is available. That, that knowing that if I get my vertical relationship right with God and ask God to help me find peace with the horizontal, that when I get right with him and come into agreement with him, his plan, his purposes for my life. And God, help me to hear clearly. If you got me in a place like you had Noah, that's difficult, assure me with your presence. Assure me that you're going to be with me. And then, Lord, give me the grace and give me the discernment to handle things on the peripheral and the circumferential. Give me the peace so I can know which relationships to maintain, which relationships to build, or which ones to avoid. I'm here to tell you God's love made the difference. And I know you're watching me. And some of you say, Pastor, I feel weak. You don't know what I'm going through. I feel like giving up. This whole coronavirus has challenged everything about my relationships. My relationships with my siblings, my, my work relationships, my romantic relationships, my, my, my relationships with my children, my relationships with my spouse, my, my significant other. It's challenged everything and it's made you feel weak. Yes, I didn't promise you that life would be a road of uh, 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 just a flower bed of ease, all honey and no bees. I didn't promise you it would be all sunshine and no rain. But what I can tell you this, when you're at the lowest moments of your life, I'm grateful that his blood will give you strength from day to day. And his blood will never, on this communion Sunday, the blood of Jesus will never lose his power. And maybe today is a good day for you to ask God to, like you washed the world clean for Noah, would you wash me clean, purify and sanitize my emotions? Show me the right direction I'm going in. And whatever needs to be addressed in my life, help me to address it in Jesus' name. Father, I need you. I need your blood to come, to give me another chance, to come in unity and agreement. And everything that's complicated in my life, in my mind, in my spirit, in my relationships, God, would you make it new in you? Show me how to walk. Show me how to proceed according to your will and your way. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
conquering heart. Praise him upon the high sound and simple. Let everything that hath breath. Let everything. Clap your hand and give God praise. My, 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 my. He agreed to do it. He agreed to die. He agreed to sacrifice his life just to save him, man. Like a rose trampled on the ground, he took the fall and thought of me above all. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this worship. Now speak to our hearts in this time, in this time we have to share in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And just in case you didn't know, the whole theme of this service has been about love. From the opening song to the pre-sermon song to our praise period and even to that message uh, that God is a God who loves us. He gave his life for you and I. And even when you're, uh, that's our vertical love, but even when there's, there are issues on the horizontal level of love, I want you to know that love covers a multitude of trans uh, transgressions. And if you don't feel the love this whole month, I want you to know that God loves you. I know it's been a coronavirus situation that's affected us in a variety of ways, but nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we're getting ready now to partake of the Lord's blood and the Lord's body, what represents the Lord's blood and the Lord's body. Theology, we call this a moment of transubstantiation transubstantiation. What does that mean? That means we're going to take these elements, what represents the Lord's body and what, what represents so. So we want you to go ahead and get your elements of communion together as we get ready to close this service. And I hope you were blessed by the message. And, and if you have bread or crackers or juice, whatever you have in your home, I want you to get it now as we're preparing to close this service out. And we thank God that he's our living word. <laughs> and I want you to know that no matter what's complicated or what's crazy or confusing, that we have a love and sometimes love gets complicated, but we in love on the new management. He loves us unconditionally and he will change your life. Why don't you go ahead and get your elements down, communion. Bring your family together around the television, around your iPad, around your laptop, around your desktop. If you're in your den, your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, get your family together now as we prepare to, to, to take this communion at this moment. Fred Hammer wrote a song, Bread of Life, Bread of Heaven, Sit Down from Glory. Many things you were on earth. <laughs> a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word. And I want you to know that. And we have a friend. So even when life seems friendless, we have a friend in him. Yeah, sit down from glory. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Many things you were on earth. Everybody. You were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are. Gentle redeemer. <laughs> God with us, the living truth. God with us, the living truth. And what a friend <laughs> we have in you. You're the living word. Awesome ruler, awesome ruler, awesome gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, come on, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you, you're the living word, it's like Jesus, 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 that's what they call you, that's what Born, Major born, born, you died, you died to save you, man. You are the living word, you are the
watching today and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, he was, he was like a rose trampled on the ground, took the fall, thought of you. He agreed to do it. He agreed to die. And today while you're watching, you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If you've never accepted him as Lord and Savior, get your phone and text the word salvation now to the number 678-201-1351. You can be saved. You can accept the Lord Jesus right now. Or maybe here you need prayer. You want somebody to pray with you through those complicated moments in relationship. I want you to just text the word prayer right now to 678-201-1351. Or lastly, maybe you want to become a part of this church. If you're watching, you don't have a church home. Whether you're in Atlanta or Alaska, Decatur or Dubai, Georgia or Ghana, you can be a part of this ministry right now. Just get your phone and text the word CONNECT to the number 678-201-1351. You can be connected right now. Or if you missed the first opportunity to give, the first offering, you can give now by text to give. You can text the codes to 678-201-1351. Information on the screen. You can give by cash app if you watch it, if you missed the first offering. Third, if you can give through the website, just click the giving links and follow the prompts accordingly. If you want to send it to the P.O. Box, the P.O. Box information is on the screen. P.O. Box 361499, Decatur, Georgia 30036. You can give right now. Text to give, cash app, through the website or through the P.O. Box. Give while you're watching. Listen, on that last night of our Lord's life, he gathered his disciples into an upper room to give them something and to give to us his body, something that will commemorate the greatest sacrifice ever known to humankind. After supper, he took bread, unleavened bread from the table that represented his body, which was going to be given and broken for you and I on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says he break it and he blessed it. Our God, thank you for this symbol of the body of Jesus, which was given and broken for us. Now we can become broken and given to the world to be a blessing. Thank you for being allowing us to be a part of the body of Christ. Now take, eat, it represents the body of our Lord. He then took the cup, the fruit of the vine, representing his blood that was gonna be shed on the cross for the remissions of sins. Our Father blessed us a symbol of the blood of Jesus. Scriptures teach us if there be no shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. We take now in remembrance of what he did for us on Calvary. Now drink ye all of it, it represents the, Lord of our, the blood of our Lord. After they had partaken, they went out to the Mount of Olives and there they sang a hymn. We're gonna sing the rest. We're gonna sing a little more of this song at this Mount of Olives as we close this service out. Because he's the living word. He's the living word. And you all be, you all be glad about that. <laughs> That's what we call you, everybody. That's what we call you. Manger born. Manger born. Put on a tree. Do, 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 do. Save humanity. You're the living word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Come on. You died to save humanity. Lift your hands as you watch and receive this benediction. And now, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. And for the rest of your days, may he give you peace. Now you go in peace and know that no matter how complicated it gets, God loves you, and everything's going to be all right. I love you. God bless you. Have a great week now. I love you. It's going to be all right. Believe that it's going to be all right. I love you. 
Have a great week. I love you. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I love you. Have a great week. Have a great week. It's going to be all right. I love you. Have a great week. I love you. It's going to be all right. Have a great week. Have a great week. I love you. Have a great week.